No. Hi, I'm Pastor Rick, and I'm still here in Rwanda. And uh, it's been a wonderful week as we come to a close of this amazing visit. And I wanted to go ahead and have these two gentlemen introduce themselves and tell you what they do for African New Life Ministries. I'm Alan Hotchkiss. I'm the U.S. Director for African New Life. I'm Augustine De Mezzo, and I work with African New Life Ministry as a sponsorship manager in yeah. Rwanda. Yes, I'm so glad to be here with you guys. And uh, Alan, I know you just joined us a couple days ago, but it's been an impactful two days. Uh, you know, talking to you, learning from you. Uh, Augustine, my brother here, I have had such a blessing to spend the entire week with him. Uh, my daughter often asks if I have a best friend. Well, you've met him. Augustine uh, is my best friend, and, uh, it's, and it's been, a, it's been a, an amazing uh, week, just so full of wonderful things. I just wanted to talk, or have you guys speak. Uh, you have a unique way of describing your well-balanced ministry. And I guess the most impactful thing about Africa New Life that I've learned here is that it is so well-balanced. And you, you guys describe it as two arms. Can, Alan, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, really, uh, our founder, Pastor Charles Spurajea, uh, used to used to pick coffee when he was a kid in, in Uganda. Pick yes. coffee. And when they would harvest coffee, they had to do it quickly, so they had to use two hands. So they'd get up in the tree and they'd pull the coffee. Wow. Okay. And so as he became a believer and began to get into ministry, um, he realized that, you know, ministry also requires two hands. There's really two main aspects to everything that we do with our new life. And really, it, in any kind of Christian ministry, there is. One is proclamation. One hand is the proclamation of the gospel. You know, Jesus used words to explain his mission. He proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the second hand is the act is compassion. Yes. Um, and we act here in acts one that is acts of compassion. So if you look at after New Life, we exist. Our, our mission statement is that we exist to transform lives, individual lives one at a time, leading to communities transformation through preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, one hand, and acting in compassion in, in his name. In Rwanda, really, what that looks like, compassion, looks like education. Yes. So our goal uh, is, uh, and, and it's important, I think, is that African life is, is it's a church. Yeah. So just like McLean, like McLean is, you know, I've been in D.C., McLean is a powerful influence for the yes, gospel. Yes, you guys be able to figure out how to do that both in proclamation and, and in compassion. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing in Rwanda. It looks a little different here. But African New Life is the compassionate expression of New Life Bible churches, which are all over Rwanda. Yes. And um, Augustine, on that note, uh, you are in charge or overseeing the entire sponsorship program here. Uh, how many uh, children do we currently have sponsored here in your ministry? Currently, we have 5,436 wow. sponsored children wow. here Praise in God. Uganda. We have six communities that we are changing the lives of those children and those six communities. We have Bujesera. Uh, where we have 663 sponsored children. Wow. But Yesela was it's, uh, it's on the eastern part of Rwanda, which was severely hit, or severely um, hit so much by genocide. And, in, and on that note, just to interrupt, just so we understand, uh, a common term in America that we use where something tragic like that happens is ground zero. It's where it begins and then goes out from there. And so Burgessera, uh, well, was the hardest hit. Almost 80% of the population was wiped out. And so what a, just 20 years later, 19 years later, what God has done through you. I'm sorry, go ahead and continue. So 8% uh, of the population of Bujasera by then were totally killed. And it went back to zero. It had no hope. But now we are building Bujasera. We are bringing hope in Bujasera. We have a church in Bujasera. We have 663 sponsored children wow, who are amazing. having quiet education that we are providing to them. And there is hope in the community. Okay. And we have other communities like Kigari, where we have, we have more than 1,300 sponsored children. We have Kayonza, and that's the where we began from. That's where African Life began from, with nine sponsored children in 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And then 29, then now we have 5,436 out of nine sponsored children. And in the Kayonza project, we have a church. We have a high school. We have, it's, by the way, it's number one school yes. in the country. <laughs> That's you know, that, and, and these are the orphans yes. who become number one in number the country. One. You know, from they, nothing, from number nothing one. to God. number one, yeah. number two in the country. 
what may amazes me is when the newspaper newspaper reporters they come looking for the parents and they can't find the parent. <laughs> the parent is yeah. African Health Ministry. Yes. You know, they get, get amazed how such a, an orphan get, comes number one in the country. So it, it, to, it shows me, it teaches me that everyone, even this needy child, this orphan, if given an opportunity, you should like, will go higher. And now we have other communities like KJOA, and KJOA we have a church. We have. Um, 935 sponsored children we have a school which is it performs very well last year we it performed wonders all the kids 95 percent children came in grade one yes that is like super a yeah. you know yes and um, now you know we have power in Nigeria. you see remote press was a remote press yes. it was a place full of refugees returnees from tanzania the, in east africa the neighboring country and it has it has hope yes the yeah. children are having good quality education than children in Kigali in other better schools in Kigali and there is power there is water there is there is there is life there, there is, is life and there it is and life. we have other communities like a JOB people have just taken up and there's a Kirehe where we're intervening now and these are more than 3,000 returnees from Congo so from Tanzania, it's a neighboring country. And um, what, what did we do? We had to find a way of having intervention in this community mm -hmm. because they, they had returned from Tanzania with no hope and 3,000. So what are we doing? We have put up a small, a big structure for, for the church, for them to have that spiritual nature, have message of hope to them. We have supplied them with food. We have put a structure for the kids to go to school. We have 600 kids. Amazing. You know, going those, you know, having to be you know, tutored. And let me remind those who are watching this right now, uh, Kirehe is where we were when we filmed with Mike Stern um, about the need, and we had preached at 300. The amazing thing, since in just a few months, uh, this is a refugee camp, uh, but we have 600 kids going to school every day. Um, and we have a church where they attend three times, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Um, so you can see the priority um, is these kids, not only their physical well-being, uh, but also uh, their spiritual. And, and to uh, give them the hope that only Jesus Christ can provide in such dire circumstances. Um, so what impact? I mean, we use that word impact a lot in the church today, America, across the world. But we're talking about 5,000 children really with absolutely nothing who are now able, through sponsorship, have hope and life. And I'm gonna let Alan in a minute elaborate on some of the impact, uh, you know, using numbers as Americans. Yeah. We, we like numbers and, they, and God likes numbers too. They're in yes, the Bible. Yes. And so we wanna talk about that. But sponsorship is more than just that. It is a very, very holistic approach to empowering the next generation in this country. And frankly, it's the model, the model of ministry that we need to use throughout the world. Um, and I can say that with confidence, that just being here a week. Uh, they take care of the health. They address that first because kids that are hungry, that are sick, uh, they're not going to be receptive to anything else until that's taken care of. And then, of course, there's education, which you'll talk about in a minute. Moving on uh, to correspondence, to keep in touch with their sponsors, to learn English and, and be able to see that the world is bigger than just their plight. And, of course, the umbrella and the fourth element of that is the spiritual component. But, Alan... Why don't you go ahead and talk about um, the impact uh, that it's had. Just take us through kind of uh, some of the uh, praise reports here that God's doing with sponsorship. Well, let me yeah talk about, step back for a minute and just give you the, how did we get in all these communities? So uh, Augustine talked about a community called Kayonza. That's where New Life Christian Academy is, and it's the number one school in the country. 70% of the kids in that school are either complete orphans wow. or their parents make less than a dollar a day. Dollar a day. Right. Wow. Now we help to cover it, so we use sponsorship to, to run that school and fund that school. Right? So these kids are the poorest kids in the country, and they become the best in the country. Wow. So it was really interesting, when that happened, uh, the media got a hold of it. And they were like, there's this, this school out in the middle of nowhere with these poor kids. And, uh, and it was really interesting what happened in the nation. Um, John Acker, who's our headmaster there, uh, within... Two weeks of the time, 
that they announced we were number one. He got 2,000 phone calls. 2,000. 2,000. <laughs> From parents in Rwanda of wealthy children and all around the world. My Rwanda is a Uganda. Washington DC, Praise you know, God. the embassy, the, the, the ambassador has a nephew that lives here in Rwanda and he wanted that kid to go to our school. <laughs> and John Africa had to say no to 99% of them who wanted to pay big money to bring their kids there because, uh, because people who make a dollar a day, their kids yes. are there. Yes. There's not room for the rich kids. Let me interrupt there really places. quick, and that's a big difference. We, there's a lot of organizations that offer sponsorship. Yeah. We, we don't need to name them. They're all yeah. over the place and stuff like that. But one of the big differences, the unique and most impactful thing, is that you never sacrifice uh, taking care of the children's uh, needs in those four areas right. I mentioned for the benefit of development. Can you explain yeah. that just quickly? So sponsorship, um, the money is for the children. We really believe long-term that a child is going to change his community. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and you think about 5,000 kids. So right now we have this one private school, and then the government has given us three public schools. Three public run. schools? Yeah. Wow. Now, uh, but what's important here is that they actually gave them to us under the understanding that we were going to do the same thing in those public schools that we do in our private school. We're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel Christ. in a public school. <laughs> and boy, Don't miss that. You see, well, this is <laughs> Africa. It's probably easy in Africa to get that permission, right? That's not true. Okay. The mayor of Kayonza, where New Life Christian Academy right. is, went to the government and said, you need to give them this school. And I know they're Christians, <laughs> and I know that terrifies you, but you, they've changed our community. I want them. And there was a, a nine-month argument in the Department of Education of Rwanda about whether they should give us this first school. Well, that first school, as Kajal is talking about, it's been the number one public school in its, in its region for three years running. Wow. Consistency. Uh, and, and in terms of sponsorship, again, the model is you got a sponsorship program with kids that are sponsored. That pays for their school fees. It pays for them to eat on a regular basis at school. It pays for their books and their supplies and their uniforms and their shoes. And they have, uh, they have it, it pays for them to go to Bible camp on the spiritual side of it. It pays for them every other Saturday to hear the wow. gospel and to get discipled. It pays for all that stuff. But then because of that, it, 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 we're able to, 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 to manage the school in a way that it becomes an elite school. So right. here's the stat that's important. In a village, this is a village, okay, one a little village. tiny village, not, not a big city, it's a village. In Rwanda, in the villages, where the, most of the poor people live, currently 77% um, of the kids in villages get to go to elementary school, so through grade six. But here's the deal, in Rwanda, you have to pass an exam in grade six to get to go to grade seven. In the villages right now, 77% of kids get to go to primary school, but only 6%, 6% out of go 70, on okay. to secondary school. Wow. Now, in our program, Every one of those 5,000 kids, our, our objective for them, and their objective as they understand it, is to finish high school. Wow. So, Kajeo is a good example of this. In the school that we took over four years ago, 74 kids took that exam last year, all sponsored kids. 74 of them passed. 72 was straight A's, basically. Wow. And because of that, they've gotten to go on to secondary schools that are boarding schools, and everybody goes to boarding school in Rwanda in, in right. seventh yeah. grade. The school down the street, which is, the, they've just given us this school this last year, right down the street. Last year, 115 kids took the sixth grade exam in that school. 115. And 15 of them passed the exam. The rest of them didn't pass the exam. And you think about it, yeah. 100 out of 150 didn't pass, meaning they didn't even think they were going to pass. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. The school three blocks, well, three miles away, where we, we've run it for four years, every one of them passed. And, and almost all of them with high marks, meaning they got to go with the elite kids to the best schools in the country for wow. seventh grade. So that's what sponsorship does. On, a, on an academic side, it, it, it's historic. It literally changes that community. So let me, you know, just to clarify, what we've got in the public schools where, um, you know, the same type of kids, but some of them way more advantaged as far as family. And yeah, they have a family like you and me. They're right. middle class, upper class kids. 15% right. yeah. roughly pass that exam, whereas those kids that have the two arms and the four pillars of scholarship that we just mentioned, the gospel of Jesus Christ being front and center, 100% of those kids yeah. not only passed, but almost all of them were the top students in the country, enabling them to go to even the uh, uh, top schools. Yeah. Now, if that doesn't talk about generational impact, that we have these children from zero to graduating high school, some of them going off into college, some of them going into vocations with a great education, 
but more importantly, the love of Jesus Christ as Christians back into this community. And behind us, you see the beautiful city and sprawling suburbs of um, Kilgali. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's heartwarming to hear. But more than that, this isn't something that can just be exclusively to Rwanda. This is a very, very mobile, uh, multiplying uh, model of ministry and true disciple making for Jesus Christ. And not just necessarily coming in and sharing the gospel for a couple years, having converts and then saying, hey, hope you do good, well in a Bible school. Uh, hopefully God blesses you with food. We got to move on to the next thing. It is staying the course so that generations and generations are uh, building a Christian infrastructure here. And this has become a country of just hope and life. Would you agree with that? I know I you do. I, do. <laughs> I, do. I just want to mention a little bit about the sponsorship. Yes, the please. Impact of yes. sponsorship, please. You know, uh, and also I'll come back. I'll come back on a little bit of development and sponsorship. Yeah. How they, it is interwoven. Yes. Because when you sponsor the individual child, this child will be is part of the community of the cell of this community, and this child he will have the future and he will come and support the village. He will support the the sisters, he will support the brothers, and that's the development we are talking about. Yes. And now, you know, that is the impact. It's, you may see little money being invested in a person, but it makes a bigger impact. I was sponsored. I was sponsored yes. with a gentleman from Alabama. I know he doesn't know how much he invested in me. I'm sponsoring my children, never be sponsored. It ended with me. Ended. And I'm sponsoring my children. That's a great I'm point. I'm supporting my ch the children of my brothers. I'm supporting my family. I'm supporting my dad, my mom. You know, that's, that's why the sponsorship comes. You know, Augustine, that is an important point. I don't want to go past that uh, quickly. <laughs> because the fact that, and I met uh, uh, Aman and uh, Pastor John, also came through as they were sponsored children. And now they're... Uh, either pastors with New Life Bible Church or they're working in one of the schools with sponsored children and they ended it like you. It isn't a generational thing where generation after generation needs to be sponsored. Once these children, this is backed up statistically, once these children are sponsored, that sponsorship ends generationally in that family. They then turn around and go back. If we could do that in every ministry, and let's just focus on McLean Bible right now. Do you realize the impact we could have on the six million inhabitants of the Washington, D.C. area? That we could end poverty generationally because of this type of model of ministry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we didn't want to go past that very critical point too quickly. Please continue. Thank you. So that's what I mean about, about ending the poverty. Mm. You know, you sponsor me, you know, it's, you are giving that little money, you are investing in this person, and you are, it's a future investment. Because you are, you are making the hope of this child become bright. Mm. And when he achieves his goal, his vision, her vision, right. then he comes back, supports Absolutely. the community, Absolutely. supports the brothers, and, and that's how it makes impact. Doing those hope visits, and this is what we, when we visit families, um, you know, we call them hope visits. These are children waiting uh, for sponsorship, and we pray with them, and we bring them um, some things for their immediate needs so they can cook and make meals. Uh, but we also do home visits, and one of the most special times for me, and um, you know, we'll, we'll wrap this up, but is that I got to visit the child, Stephen, that I sponsor in a very remote area. And um, you would be amazed, no matter how many gifts we might bring or things from America that we might bring, what they really focused on and what Stephen focused on was a picture of my family back in America, but also the fact that we would take the time uh, to reach out to him. And so I would encourage everybody watching this, uh, Rwanda wants you. They want you to come through here uh, as your missions pastor, outreach pastor. Uh, talk to me about that. Um, I certainly want to do that. But where we can start making an impact today uh, is sponsorship. Sponsoring these kids. And sure, I'm going to look into doing something like this in our local communities when I get home. But um, now, with all of that impact we make in education and health insurance provided by a sponsorship, it must cost an immense amount of money per month to provide that. And, you know, we got money in America. So lay it on us. Uh, we're not going to be sticker shock. How much per month? $39 per month. $39 per month. That's not even going to interfere with my Starbucks budget. Oh. So it makes impact. It does make an impact. Yes. And um, I say that in, in jest because $39 is not just thrown out there and you hope it does some impact. Uh, <laughs> we have it here. You can see it. Uh, you can see it on a spreadsheet if you want, but you can also see it in the faces. 
And one of the last things I want to say uh, before we say uh, goodbye on this video is the fact that disciple making uh, sometimes ends up being another task in the American church. We, we say, well, we're doing all this ministry, we're doing projects, um, and then, we, oh yeah, and we got to go ahead and do some disciple making because Jesus told us to do it. When I, every, without exception, every single person with this organization and with New Life Bible Church as well uh, that I talked to, discipleship was just who they were. Disciple makers was who they were. Um, and that just uh, speaks volumes to the leadership and to the heart that Jesus Christ has implanted here. Do we have any closing remarks before we go ahead and say goodbye? Yeah, I just want to encourage everyone, and um, basically from a clean Bible church, that if you can't please sponsor a child, mm -hmm. you are making impact in the life of this child. Mm -hmm. And you can't imagine how much you are investing, you are helping this child have their dream, their vision achieved. Mm -hmm. God bless. Yes. I would add to that, that when you sponsor a child, you're really caring for a family and a community, especially the family. I just my story really quick is I sponsored for the before I was working for the ministry I sponsored a child in 2006 here in Rwanda in Kigali right and I remember when I went to see the child for the first time went to their family her dad was a butcher worked for a butcher actually in a butcher shop and he made sixty dollars a month mm. and uh, I realized you know this is real I mean yeah this thirty nine dollars a month we pay it directly to the school so it's not going to go to the family but what it does is um, it takes the burden of having to pay those school fees off of that father. So I sponsored this little girl in May of 2006. Right. Two years ago, the dad called us. Wow. And he said, you know, because you've, I sponsored his girl and there was one other girl in the family that somebody else sponsored. Um, he said, because you guys have invested in our, our kids' education, that took the burden off me. I was able to save some money. And I bought my own butcher shop. Wow. And in fact, now yeah. I have three of them. Wow. And I don't need you to sponsor my kids anymore. And so when you talk about sponsoring a child, you're sponsoring a family. That's what's really happening. You're giving, you know, the Bible talks about a load, you know, that each one of us needs to carry our own load, and then you have a burden. And in this community, the load is, I mean, just like our load as parents, my load is to, is to care for my kids and raise them up to know Jesus Christ. Yes. To, you know, but then my, the burden here is education. Yes. So we help with the education, but by us doing that, then his load is lightened. Yeah. And he can do more with that money. Yes. And the integrity of um, ending the sponsorship, because now not only did he, we transform the family through Jesus Christ and sponsorship, but the community then is transformed exactly. because there's more jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, boy, it's a simple thing. We, if we just stop the complicated. Well, this has been an amazing talk. Um, today we depart uh, just for a little while, but I just wanted to say God bless you. And remember the proclamation of the gospel and acts of compassion. We'll see you soon. God bless.